Hello, my dears. Uh, I am back to uh, present another lesson for you, my dears, and I am very delighted to uh, be back uh, to uh, provide you with uh, some, uh, you know, uh, very, you know, interesting and fascinating, you know, topics. They are, you know, super useful, you know, as most uh, American, you know, uh, people say. Uh, you know, these are super useful. And um, I want to uh, say this uh, as well that, uh, my dears, uh, you will have, because uh, some of you had, uh, you know, uh, you contacted me and you had uh, questions about, you know, your exam and uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, and I would like you, uh, I would like to assure you that you will have no problem. Okay, you will be given plenty of time and uh, in due time, Okay, you will be given uh, the uh, you know units which are included for your final exam, and uh, you know as you guys all know that we didn't uh, study much. Okay, so there isn't a lot of things you have to go over or review. So uh, you will have no problem. For now, uh, the only thing you have to do is to focus on this because we have to finish this. You need this. These are very very important. This is the only thing that I want you to. You know, think about. Right, yes, let's go to the remaining pages or the remaining sections of Unit uh, 7. My apologies. Okay, uh, we are uh, on page uh, 160, okay, and we didn't uh, do the right what you think in the previous lesson. That's why we, we are doing it now, and I would like to explain in detail the questions and give you, you know, clues, give you hints to help you okay to assist you in finding answers and thinking of answers okay the first question says do you think it's better to save and wear old clothing or to buy new trendy clothing okay clothes and why see this is the question if you think that wearing and you know using old uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, clothes like you know uh, trousers or pants or shirts or shoes or anything okay do you think that it is better to save them and wear them instead of you know buying new ones if yes why why do you think this is correct why do you think this is the right thing to do okay this is the question for example in my opinion yeah yeah uh, sometimes yeah this is correct okay in some cases why because you may not have the money to buy uh, new things to buy the you know, new pieces of clothing, that's why you are obliged to, you know, use the old ones, okay? But if you have plenty of money, so you will have no problem in changing, uh, you know, your outfit uh, every now and then. Uh, and the second question, it says, Mad Anthony gives reasons to support his opinion that the throne of a society is a good thing, okay? Do you think these are good reasons? Why or why not? Okay, let me remind you what Ma Mad Anthony said, okay? In his opinion, okay, so people uh, would like to buy new stuff and uh, they don't like to repair old stuff for three reasons. Because the prices of things are low, because of low prices, and second, because of increased wealth, because people are getting richer, people are richer now, uh, you know, uh, comparatively uh, to uh, the past, okay? And the third reason is increased features. So, in the new products, okay, uh, there may be features. There may be, you know, qualities which uh, they didn't exist in the old, uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, product. So, you would, uh, so it is, uh, you know, normal and it is natural for people to, uh, you know, want to buy new stuff because of those three reasons. Do you think that those reasons are good? Are they reasonable? Are they right to you? If yes, why? If no, why? Okay. Do you agree or disagree with Mad Anthony's reasons? Okay. Do you agree or disagree? This is basically the question. In my opinion, I agree with uh, his, you know his reasons, but not with all of them. Okay. For example, for low prices, for low prices, I agree. For increased, uh, you know, uh, wealth, you know. Uh, I disagree with this because not many people, you know, the, their condition, their living condition, you know, isn't like this, isn't uh, like, uh, you know, perfect. So th they are obliged to use the old stuff instead of buying new stuff. And for increased features, 
you know, in some products, I agree. But in some other products, you see that there isn't, you know, much difference between the old, the old version and, the, uh, for example, the new version in some products. I'm not saying in all of them. Because obviously, um, take a smartphone as an example, okay? You already bought the old version, okay, three years ago. And now uh, they, uh, you know, released the newest and the latest version. Of course, there's, you know, a gigantic difference between these two. So it is reasonable for you to want to buy this uh, new product. Okay, my dears, uh, after watching the uh, video in Activity B, this video, okay, you go to Activity C. And here we have what? Uh, this is uh, this uh, method, you know, is called devising. What, you may ask, what is devising? Devising is uh, getting information from uh, different sources, okay, and collecting them to answer questions. So this activity is asking you uh, th the same thing. It is asking you to, uh, you know, uh, use your information from reading one, from reading two, from the unit video, okay, to... Uh, discuss these questions to answer these questions look at the first one what are some of the advantages of buying new things instead of fixing old things give examples so you first talk about you know on a, you take out a, a piece of paper you talk about the advantages of buying new things buying something new instead of uh, fixing something old okay then you uh, provide examples so the examples are easy for example buying a, a new uh, you know, for example, phone, okay, and, uh, you know, uh, instead of fixing an old phone, it, it is better, buying the new phone, because uh, the fixing of the old phone costs more than buying a new phone, so why, why you know, uh, a, a question, you know, comes to your mind here, why, to, why put, you know, a lot of money in fixing uh, something old, where, you know, when you can pay the same amount of money to buy a new phone. So that is the question. Then you can, you know, uh, bring examples for this. The, the phone is just one example. The second question, some people uh, make new things from old items. So this is true. Some people use uh, old uh, stuff to make new stuff. Okay. For example, some artists make jewelry from old computer parts. So they bring uh, in uh, old computer parts, okay, uh, different uh, parts of a computer and they make jewelry from it. What are some new ways you can use something you normally throw away? See, um, my ideas, the idea of this question is this. For example, imagine that normally, okay, when you don't need something, you throw it away. Okay, but here, you don't throw it away. You use it in something else. You use it for something else. For example, power cable. L let me give you this, this example. Power cable, okay, the cable you use for electricity, you know, in your, ha in your homes, in your houses. Okay, so when that cable gets old, when it is, you know, too old, uh, you know, uh, for using, okay, so you change the cables, okay, so you use that old cable to, you know, sometimes in some, uh, you know, uh, some people do this, they uh, t tie the cable, okay, to two uh, bars, to two, uh, you know, irons, and they make a washing line, they make a clothes line, to hang up, you know, clothes for uh, drying. Okay, when you, when you wash clothes, you take it out and you hang it. You hang it for drying. So some people use, you know, power cable for, you know, as washing line. You can check washing line and clothes line, and then you will get, you know, what I say. So this is just, just one example. Instead of throwing away the power cable, they use it for something else, something very useful. Okay? For example, bottles, water bottles. You, instead of throwing it or trashing it when you, you know, drink the water, okay, you can, uh, you know, the government, you know, can have a plan to collect all of these water bottles and use the plastic to make other stuff, okay, to make many, many other useful uh, stuff which is made of plastic. So that is another example. So I want you to think of other examples, okay, which something... When something gets old and it isn't usable, okay, people can use it for, you know, something very uh, useful. For example, a power cable, when it gets old, people use it as a washing line. So this is just a very, very simple idea. I am sure you can think of uh, many, you know, advanced and uh, uh, more uh, complicated ideas. Okay, my dears, now uh, we come to what? Uh, 
We come to the vocabulary skill. We have a phrasal verb. Phrasal verb is what? Yeah, let me explain. Uh, so a phrasal verb is a verb uh, plus a particle. What's a particle? So you may have uh, this question that, what is particle? Particle is this, in, out, up, over, by, down, and away. These are particle. Those are called particle. They come with a verb, so we call them phrasal verb. Okay? When a particle is added to a verb, it often creates a new meaning. Okay, so look at this. I want to watch the game on, the, on TV tonight. So watch meaning to look at the game. Watch out, when we add the particle, watch out for ice on the stairs. So on the stairs, you know, stairs you use to go uh, to, you know, uh, when you are on the first floor, you go to the second floor. Use stairs to go to the second floor. So watch out, is a, it has a new meaning. So it means be careful. Watch out for, you know, uh, the, the, uh, for that car, uh, you know, uh, which is driving, you know, behind you, for example. Okay, watch out for cars when you cross the street. When you cross the street, so watch, uh, see if there's, uh, you know, uh, any car, you know, driving by. Many phrasal verbs have more than one meaning. So look at these uh, three phrasal verbs, pick up. They have three different meanings. Look at the first one. He picked up the book and started to read, meaning he lifted the book. Look at that a second. Abdullah picked up his friend in his new red car. So, gave a ride. So, when you pick someone uh, in, your, in your car, okay, that means you uh, go, to, uh, go to your friend. Your, your friend, imagine, your friend calls you, okay, and he tells you, uh, come and pick me up. I want to go to the library, for example. So, you go to your friend, you pick him up in your car, and you take him to the library. So, that is picking up. Give someone a ride, that is the meaning. The wind picks up in the afternoon, meaning increases. So the wind gets stronger. The wind gets stronger in the, uh, you know, afternoon. So that is pick up. You, you have pick up in three, uh, you know, different sentences with three different meanings. Some phrasal verbs are separable, so you can separate them. He picked up the book. He picked the book up. So these two are correct. No problem. Yolanda threw away her old shoes. Yolanda threw her old shoes away. No problem. But for these, they are inseparable. So we can't separate these. Okay? Oli fell down the stairs. So we can't say Oli fell the stairs down. So we have no such thing in, in English. Eva stopped by my house yesterday. So this is correct. Stopped by. But we can't, you know, put the object between the particle and the verb. Okay? So we can't say Eva stopped my house by yesterday. So this is incorrect. This is incorrect. But Oli fell down the stairs is correct. Okay? So the verb and the particle are together. Eva stopped by my house yesterday. So this is correct as well. Okay? My dear, I hope you understood the phrasal verb. Is, this is very easy. We have a simple verb and with a particle. The particles are in, out, up, over, by, down, away. Okay? So when they, uh, when they are together, they have a new meaning. Okay? So, they create a new meaning. That is what we call phrasal verb. Okay? Uh, let's uh, uh, turn the page. My dears, we come to uh, page 162. Here we have uh, what? Yeah, we have activity A. So, what I want you to do is this. You can see phrasal verbs in bold. Uh -huh, they are written in bold. Okay? So, your job is what? Your job is to circle the meaning of the phrasal verb in bold. Look at the first one. I wore out my favorite jeans, so I bought a new pair. So that means when you wear out, this is the past form, wore out, so that means use it too much. I used my jeans too much, so that's why I bought you know, a new pair. Look at the fourth example. You shouldn't throw away plastic bottles. So throw away, what does it mean throw away? So that means you should recycle them. So throw away means to put it in the trash. When you want to put something in the trash, you say what? You say, throw away. Okay? And I will leave the other ones for you. They are very easy. You can figure out the meaning, uh, you know, instantly. And for uh, the activity B, this was activity A. For activity B, we have what? It says, rewrite the sentences. Put the object between the verb and the particle. Okay? So, separate the verb and the... Uh, particle. Look at number one. We picked up the children from school. So we picked the children up from school. 
So you put the children between the verb and the particle. Look at the uh, second example. Please throw away your trash. Don't leave it in the park. So please throw your trash away. Don't leave it in the park. So you see there, your trash, this is the object. Okay, between the verb and the particle. Look at number five. I walk a lot, so I wear out my shoes, uh, you know, quickly. I walk a, lo a lot, so I wear my shoes out quickly. So uh, here we have the object between the verb and the particle. I wear my shoes out quickly. And I will leave the other two for you, my dears. They are very easy. You just have to put the object between the verb and the particle. That's all you have to do. Put the object. This is the object. Okay? This is the object. Okay? My old watch. This is the object. And, uh, you know, your hat. This is the object. For example, your trash. This is the object. The children. This is the object. You have to put the object between the verb and the particle. That's all you have to Okay, my dears. Now, uh, we come towards... Uh, we are done with the reading section, and I hope you, uh, you know, uh, you know, benefited a lot from uh, this. And uh, it is very easy, very easy. There is nothing difficult in here. And if you, if you find anything difficult in here, you can contact me and ask me. You know, any question you uh, you may have a problem with. In our writing section, uh, so we come to the writing skill. Uh, we have sentence variety. So meaning uh, different types of sentences in one place. So that is the meaning of sentence variety. We have different types of sentences, you know, in one place. Look at this. When, we, when you write, it's important to use different types of sentences. So this is very important, okay? Using different types of sentences makes your writing more interesting to read. Here are some types of... Here are some ways to uh, improve your sentence variety. You have to use long sentence and short sentences in your paragraph. For example, imagine you are writing a paragraph. Use long sentences and short sentences. Okay. If you have too many short sentences, combine two sentences into one sentence. Use and, use but, use so. Okay. So combine the two short sentences together. Look at the third point. We have what? It says use questions and imperatives. Sometimes in the, in the paragraph you are writing. So write down a question okay and sometimes you know uh, you know use imperative meaning command command uh, you know uh, your reader to do something for example you could say listen to this this is a command okay or you, you can ask you know questions look at these examples so these examples all come from reading one okay from uh, you know uh, the Matt Anthony you know uh, the uh, not the uh, Mad Anthony, you, you know, a text. The text uh, we had before Mad Anthony. It was all about, you know, think before you uh, toss. Perhaps Grandpa has a point. In our modern world, when something wears out, we throw it away and buy a replacement. My dears, I want you to focus on this. See, this is a long sentence. In our modern world, when, we, when something wears out, we throw it away. This is a long sentence. And we connect this long sentence to a short sentence by a replacement. We use and. Okay, do you see and? Products are plentiful and prices are low. Okay, so we, we connect these two sentences with and. Okay. So, we would rather buy something new than repair it. Why should we use cloth kitchen towels? Okay, do you see the question? This is the question mark. It is easier to use paper towel once and toss it out so you can see that we use we can use questions and we can use and to uh, link uh, the you know two short two or three you know short sentences together sometimes we can use a comma we can use a comma to link uh, two uh, short uh, sentences together okay M maybe we have three sentences we use a comma to link the first one to the second one and we use and to link the second one to the third one Look at this uh, activity we have. Uh, read the model paragraph. So this is a paragraph. This is an example of a paragraph. So your job is uh, your job is to do what? You read this, and you come to answer these questions. It says circle the short sentences in the paragraph. So when you see a short sentence, a subject, a verb, and that's it. Okay, with a complement. So you have to circle it. When you see a long sentence, when you have, you know, two commas and the sentence is long, okay, and it uses but and and, 
So underline it. When you see a question in the paragraph, please tick it. Mm -hmm. Do a tick. And uh, when you see an imperative, when you see an imperative, you know, commanding, ordering, okay, so put a star next to imperatives. So look at this. Look at the, what I did. Do you prefer to fix what you have or buy new things? So, see, I tick it. I tick this because this is a question. I love buying shoes. I circled, you know, I encircled this because it's a short sentence. I already have lots of shoes in different styles and colors, but I, I always find a new pair that I want to buy. So, see, I underlined this. So, that means it's a long sentence. That's why I underlined it. And uh, look at the last one. Buy a new pair. Buy a new pair. So, this is telling you. Buy a new pair. This is ordering you, commanding you. Okay, so I put a star before it. This is supposed to be a star. I, I know it doesn't look like a star, but you know, my drawing is, you know, terrible. So my apologies for that. Okay, so this is how you do it. Okay, my dears, and I want you to look at the paragraph and look for other short sentences, other long sentences, other questions, and other imperatives. I gave you just one example to show you how to do it. Okay? So, thank you. Okay, my dears, so yeah, we have what now? Activity B. It says, take the two short sentences and make them one long sentence. Okay, so use and, but, and so. So I want to tell you, I want you to know this as an extra information. And, but, and so. Okay, these are called conjunctions. So we use these words to link short sentences. So they are called conjunction. Okay, coordinating conjunctions. Sometimes they are called coordinating conjunction because they create coordination. They create a link between two short sentences. Look at the first one. I try to recycle things. So let's link these two sentences. I try to recycle things, you know, comma, but other people in my family usually just throw things away. So you have to understand the meaning of these two sentences. Then you can choose from this. Okay, so here we need but because I do, I do something, but uh, the other people in my family, you know, they do something else. So we need but, because there are two opposite ideas. So what, what I do, uh, you know, with uh, you, what, my fam what other people in my family, you know, do, uh, that is opposite. Okay, I do something, they do something else. Number two, it was raining all day. It was raining all day, comma, so my clothes got wet. Okay, you could say, so my clothes got wet so why do you use so so uh, this is uh, you know like this is uh, this uh, one meaning of this it is like because it was raining all day so my clothes got wet so because of the raining my uh, clothes you know got wet so you have to understand the meaning of this when we have two opposite ideas we use but when we when we have uh, you know two ideas we want to link them we use and Okay, so we, when we want to say that something is the result of something else. Okay, this is how you understand so. This is the result of this. Okay, so that's why we use so. It was raining all day, so my clothes got wet. And I will leave the other ones for you. Look at number five. I wish vacation were longer. Okay, I wish vacation were longer and school starts on Monday. Can we say this? Or we should say, I wish vacation were longer, so school starts on Monday. Or, I wish vacation were longer, but school starts on Monday. So, I want you to choose between these three options. Which one is fit for here? So is fit, and is fit, or but is fit? In my opinion, but is fit here. Okay, but I will not tell you the reason, because I want you to find out the reason yourselves. Okay? So... Uh, for activity C, my dears, we have a writing model. We have a writing sample of a paragraph here. So this paragraph uh, talks about what? Uh, it talks about, you know, some students, you know, uh, they have difficulty in their school because uh, their school is all trashed. There is uh, full of litter. There is full of, uh, you know, uh, their school is full of litter and uh, it is full of, you know, uh, trash. And they are, you know, uh, preparing a plan. They are planning how to, you know, solve this problem. So, 
let's read this, then I will tell you what to do with this. Earlier this year, some students noticed that the recycling was difficult at our school. There were no containers to collect papers for recycling. People just threw things away. Also, many students drink bottled water. They throw bottles in the trash without thinking. Student organizers made posters about recycling. They put containers for recycling paper in every classroom and office. In one month, there was a significant increase in the amount of paper in the containers. There were also more bottles in the containers. The organizers are happy with the results. They hope people's habit, habits continue to change. They hope attitudes change too. Okay, so what I want you to do with this paragraph is this, my dears. I want you to write this paragraph again. Write exactly the same thing, but make some changes. Okay, so I want you to use sentence variety. Please, link short sentences together. Okay, here. And try to write down long sentences when you rewrite the paragraph. For example, look at the changes I made. I put because between these two. Okay. So, some students noticed that the recycling was difficult at school because there were no containers to collect paper for recycling. Okay? Look at this other example. Okay? In one month, there was a significant increase in the amount of paper in the containers. And there were also bottles in the containers. So, I used and here. So, what I, so what I want you to do is to use sentence variety and change the sentences. Combine short sentences with and, but, and so. And I want you to also, you know, write you know, long sentences. Try to make the sentences longer. Link them. Okay, try to make them longer. And rewrite the same paragraph. This is a practice for, you know, sentence variety. It helps you a lot. Okay, my dears, now for uh, activity D, we have this. So, let me, uh, you know, help you through uh, this and tell you, uh, specifically how to uh, fill out these uh, boxes see uh, as you can see in the uh, for, uh, in the title it says write an outline for a paragraph giving your opinion on the statement okay this is the statement everyone should be required to recycle okay so we should you know write a topic sentence but uh, we should use this we should change this into a topic sentence and Write it down. So, our job is what? When we wrote the topic sentence, I believe everyone should help with trash pr problem and recycling. Okay? So, this is the topic sentence. So, after this, we have to come and write reasons for this. Why? Okay? Your reader, uh, you know, asks this question. Asks this question. Why should we do this? So, we have to, you know, write down reasons. Reason number one. If we don't help with... Uh, you know, a uh, trash problem, and if we don't uh, do our best to recycle stuff, okay, we are going to be polluting the environment. This is reason number one, okay, this is my reason, my reason number one. My reason number two, okay, if we don't help with trash problem and recycling, okay, uh, we are going to have, uh, you know, a li little uh, resource, okay, in the end, for example, see, we use resources to uh, produce products, okay? We use, uh, you know, resources to produce, you know, plastic, to produce glass uh, or any other material, okay? We use the resource from the earth, okay, from the, pl uh, from the planet, okay? If we don't, if we keep using that resource, okay, we are going to be running out of that resource. So, uh, that's why recycling is uh, an advantage and it helps us to keep our resources intact and save you know our resources for you know for t times of crisis yeah, reason number three okay it uh, you know uh, causes the environment okay pollution it causes pollution if we have you know too much trash okay we, we, we don't know what to do with, with the trash okay so that's why recycling you know helps recycling helps you know to save the environment and to save, uh, you know, many other things beside the environment, our resources, and, you know, and uh, why you you may say this, you know, you may say that uh, why uh, is recycling, you know, the only choice, the only choice we have for you know trash problem, until we have another another alternative. Yeah, this is the you know, 
the only you know available choice we have to uh, solve the uh, you know pollution and the trash uh, problem uh, you know when there is around so that was the reason number three as you can see the reasons are all related to each other okay they are all related to each other so that's why we should all help with this everyone should help with this okay because if I if I you know start for myself okay I am only one person in the you know whole globe so I'm not going to make many any you know much of a you know difference so that's why we have to you know assist each other and we have to you know at the tackle this problem you know hand in hand and everyone uh, should you know participate in uh, resolving this you know problem and for, for your conclusion this is important my dears you write down the uh, you know your, your opinion you write down the topic sentence here and the conclusion that's all you have to do but but change the words because you have to write down the conclusion in other words so that's why I believe that after this write down the uh, topic sentence your opinion here but use other words okay if, if uh, you know it helps you can use synonyms as well you can use synonyms as well and uh, as you can see in this uh, writing tip it says for opinion paragraphs support your opinion with reasons so with these and you have to give the reasons detail okay not uh, you know writing it with only one sentence because in the unit assignment I'm going to give you a paragraph an opinion paragraph so and you have to write an opinion paragraph so for the reasons please give a detail okay not only with one sentence that is you know very very uh, you know not, not enough that isn't enough that isn't uh, you know sufficient and you can also provide examples you can also write down examples that, that is totally okay and even you know strengthens your paragraph your concluding sentence must you know restate your opinion above and you, for opinions you can say I think I believe I feel that you know those are you know all uh, useful expressions when you want to give your opinion when you want to you know express your opinion so there you go now you know how to write an opinion paragraph okay your opinion you write your opinion in the topic sentence your, your opinion is the topic sentence then you give reasons for your opinion then in the conclusion you write it down you rewrite your opinion but you use other words that's all you have to do okay and we will skip these two and uh, after you've uh, finished uh, filling out these boxes you can take out a piece of paper a blank piece of paper and you can uh, put all the information on this you know into a paragraph you can you know write down a uh, paragraph using this information okay but, but uh, you have everything you need here to write a paragraph okay and then you can show it to a classmate you can send it to your friends and you can get feedback you can ask for feedback that is very you know uh, fine that is very fine as and it helps you a lot it's very helpful for you okay and you can send me this to you know uh, have my feedback as well I am I'm glad to uh, you know give you feedbacks for that my dear uh, now we uh, have another okay a grammar topic which is uh, simple past and past continuous I'm sure you know uh, you have already uh, studied this, but uh, I'm just, you know, going to, you know, remind you of uh, some uh, important, you know, facts here. Uh, for simple past, uh, we use it to describe a single action that happened in the past at the, and it is completed. Or we use it to talk about a series of actions, you know. Some things, you know, they happened after each other and they all happened in the past and they are completely, you know, finished. Look at these examples. I bought the new I bought the new novel by my favorite author yesterday. So this is single action. But look at these. You know, this is a series of actions. You know, Mark drove home, uh, unloaded his car, and made a cup of tea. So the, we have three actions: first driving home, then unloading his car, then made a cup of tea. So now you know that we can also use simple past for a series of actions. You know, which happened in the past and completely finished. And we can also use simple past to do what? To use the, we can also use simple past to describe a habitual or repeated action in the past. See, to understand this, I want you to imagine that you did something or, uh, you know, for a period of time in the past, you kept doing something. Okay, for example, last summer I went to the park every weekend. So, as you can see, you know, it is repeated. Every single weekend I went to the park. Okay, look at the second example. It says, I sent Lil Lila 
sorry, I sent Layla three emails, but she never, you know, replied. So, as you can see, you know, uh, the action happened continuously without stopping, you know, three emails after, after one another. Okay, so we use simple past also for repeated actions, for something which happened in the past continuously, but, but it is also finished. It is all, you know, there in the past, not, not present in the past. And we use past continuous to talk about the duration of an action. For example, an action started here and finished here. We want to talk about in between. Okay, for example, you say, I was talking on the phone for, for hours last night. So last night, you know, we are talking about the duration. Okay, I was talking on the phone to, you know, for like five hours, for example. My brother was acting strangely yesterday. So this is also, we are talking about the duration. So for a period of time, maybe three hours. My brother was continuously talking, okay, or continuously acting strangely. And uh, we have a note here, my dears, we have a, a note here, which is this. See, when we have while and when, it is important for you to know. See, after while, we always have a past continuous, okay? And after when, we also have past continuous. But we have to, uh, you know, know this. Sometimes we have two sentences. One of them is simple past and the other one is past continuous, okay? So... My dears, always remember, before the past continuous, we, also, we always have while, okay? And before the past continuous, we can, sometimes we have when. So when and while come with the past continuous. They, they, uh, see, they don't uh, like generally come with the simple past. They mostly come with the uh, past continuous. Look at these two examples. Sultan left the room while... The teacher was still talking. You see, while, and it comes before, you know, past continuous. And here we have simple past, okay? No while. But for before the past continuous, we have while, okay? And uh, this is called interrupted action, okay? So, so just so you know, this is called interrupted, you know, action or interrupted event. You know why? Because while the teacher was talking, Sultan left the room. So in the middle of the teacher talking, Sultan left the room. So Sultan interrupted the teacher. So this interrupted the teacher's action. Okay, so this is called interrupted action. So, you know, just so you know. Look at the second example. When I was studying in South Korea, I, I met many interesting people. Okay, so as you can see, before, uh, you know, positive continuous, we have when, and we have a coma, then we have... Uh, simple past so this is important this is important for you to know that when I was studying in South Korea you know something happened in the middle of that something happened I met many interesting people so in the middle of these two actions you know two other things happened okay so I hope you understood this and I have no problem for activity A and B I will uh, you know uh, provide explanation Okay, my dears, for activity A, uh, we have what? It says, read the sentences, these sentences. Check the function of simple past in bold, uh, you know, in, in the sentences. So, we said that uh, in, for simple past, we have uh, some functions, okay? Some, uh, sometimes simple past is a single action. When we have one verb, that means it's a single action. But when we have, uh, you know, more than one verb, two verbs, three verbs, that is, you know, series of actions but when we have uh, you know something which happened in the past but continuously it was repeated more than one time we call it repeated action okay look at the first example i left the restaurant at 6 p.m last night so this is a single action because we have only one verb only one thing happened and finished look at the second one when the president came into the room everyone stood up and clapped so, as you can see, we have three actions, because we have three verbs. K uh, you know, the president came into the room, everyone stood up, and everyone clapped. As you can see, this is called series of actions. Okay? Look at number three. Eric rewrote his story five times. Okay, as you can see. So, this action happened five times. So, this is called repeated action. That's why I ticked this box. Because it repeated five times. 
it was repeated five times that's why we call it repeated action and I will leave the other ones for you okay my dears this is you know very easy and let's go to activity B we have what we do the same thing but uh, this time okay it is for past continuous so we uh, we have to know that past continuous has two functions one of them is duration one of them is inter interrupted action so a tip for you to make this easier when you see while and when that means it is interrupted action but when you see that it is talking about the duration for example all week I was watching TV all week you say it is duration okay but when you see when and while before past continuous that is interrupted action look at number one Jim broke his leg while he was playing soccer so this is interrupted action why because in the middle of Jim playing soccer he broke his leg so that is interrupted action because something happened in the middle of it okay number two I was watching TV all weekend so this is duration this is talking about the duration you know for example how, for how many hours did you you know watch TV I was watching TV you know uh, all weekend okay and I will leave the other ones for you you know they are very easy and uh, no problem there my dears for our unit assignment okay for our unit assignment my dears as usual I have prepared a map for you I think these maps uh, you know uh, help you a lot okay these maps uh, they all help you a lot and uh, you know uh, later okay I will ask you to, uh, to uh, give me feedbacks about uh, you know doing this because uh, this is one of uh, the the most effective ways okay to explain writing because when you have a map before you you know where to put the information okay you don't mix everything together okay you don't put everything you know before and after you know uh, each other write an opinion paragraph so opinion paragraph is a paragraph where you you know give your opinion you offer your opinion so here we have to plan and write we have to brainstorm so uh, my dears I want you to be careful when in the for example in the exam when I give you topics first you have to brainstorm you have to think about the topic you know a lot you have to think deeply about the topic then you can write down the paragraph about the topic so brainstorming is very important before going to writing the paragraph okay so in the brains in the brainstorm you have to write as many ideas as you can get from for, for example from cycling how many ideas comes to your you know uh, mind when you uh, see the word cycling for example this is the topic you have to write down all of those then you come to plan your writing this is very helpful this this uh, you know way of planning uh, especially for the exam okay because it makes the process you know much faster okay so for example uh, you know uh, first this is called outline if, if uh, you know someone tells you outline your plan so that means so to talk about your plan you know step by step like this do something like this and you will have uh, sufficient information to write your paragraph so first you have to write down the topic it is better to it is better to repair old things items than to buy new ones for example this is the topic this is your opinion then you have to you know give reasons to support this why why is this you know better why is this better you have to write down three reasons but please give a detail okay do not write you know shortly briefly I do not need short or brief okay give a detail as much as you can you know uh, look at this uh, tip for success it says in a test situation you need to quickly organize your ideas before you write your answer okay for example in a, in a test when I give you topics and I tell you write a paragraph you don't have much time so you have to organize your ideas quickly so this helps you when you know your reasons you only have to write them you know after that but first you have to prepare your reasons prepare the topic sentence meaning your opinion then prepare the reasons okay an informal outline is a quick and easy way uh, to plan your writing so plan doing this helps you a lot for your writing and for opinion paragraph my dears this is the idea this is opinion paragraph where you uh, you know give your opinion you write down the topic the topic is uh, recycling okay for any topic any topic you want 
And in the introduction, first you have to give an introduction. In this introduction, you write down the topic sentence. Meaning you write down your opinion here. Okay? So, let me write, write it down for you. Opinion. Okay? Opinion. You write down your opinion here. Okay? This is where you put your opinion. Then you write down reasons for that opinion. For example, you say it is better to buy new things uh, than, you know, uh, to fix old uh, things. So you have to give reasons. Why is it better? Three or four reasons. And you have to give detail to your reasons. Okay? So try to, you know, make your reasons clear. That is what I'm saying. Let your reasons be clear, not, you know, confusing. Then, the last thing you do is the conclusion. For your conclusion, this is the only thing you do. That is why I think you uh, rewrite your opinion here, but you use other words. Okay? You use, use synonyms for this. Okay? But you, you uh, rewrite your opinion, you know, which you wrote above, right here. And that is the conclusion. That is all you have to do to write an opinion paragraph. I hope you, you know, uh, you know, find this uh, useful. This is called, you know, uh, mapping. Okay, this mapping helps you, you know, a lot. Why? You may, you may ask yourself this question. Because it, you know, it teaches you how to be organized. It teaches you organization. Okay, and it organizes your paragraph. And you know where to put what. Okay, because without this... And only explaining the book, that's not enough. Okay? You will be confused. Okay? You won't know precisely what to do. But with this, now, you know, in the you know, exam, it will be easier for you. Okay? And you can quickly put your ideas together and write a wonderful uh, opinion paragraph. Thank you very much, my dears. And uh, there you go uh, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Unit 7. And you can, uh, you know, use the checklist and also the words we studied in this. A unit that you will uh, you'll find them you know very useful uh, thank you very much uh, for all of you for listening and watching and we will begin with unit eight uh, next lesson but until that thank you very much and i have the the best wishes for you my dears i love you a lot bye bye